we are here for Primetime Kitchen's How Tuesdays, episode four. Tonight we're doing meatloaf, our recipe for meatloaf. Now look, I know that sometimes you guys may want us to do fancy stuff. Our sides tonight are a little fancy. Just relax. This is just a good, wholesome, everyday meatloaf recipe that we've been eating at the Colbert House for a very long time. 15 years or so we've been eating this recipe. The sides are going to be a little different tonight. You'll see some cool stuff. We're going to do some roasted Brussels sprouts, which are delicious. Delicious. Actually made them for a snack last night. And we're going to do a cauliflower puree. Some people would call it a cauliflower mash. And we're going to put some white cheddar in there. We may put some white truffle oil in there. I don't know how hacky we're going to get tonight. We'll give it a shot. Also, remind you guys about a couple things before we get started tonight. Um, we do have a uh, brand new website, ptkradio.com. Up there, you'll find stuff like this. Also, new t-shirt designs like that. Turn it around. Turn it around. What? You didn't see it. Turn what? it around so you can... Can cool. you see it? Yeah, now okay. you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we have other cool stuff coming as well. We have some... Uh, we have some pints like this one right here and some other cool stuff so that's ptkradio.com also our instagram is primetime kitchen and twitter is ptk real radio uh, find us there as well we do update those as much as we possibly can of course you guys know where facebook is because you're here so let's get cooking <laughs> uh, we have our oven preheated to 350 degrees now with everything we've learned about cooking you kind of do it in stages we know my meatloaf is going to take about 35 40 minutes to cook and the Brussels sprouts are actually going to roast a little faster, but pretty much about the same time. So we're going to steam this broccoli tonight. I normally roast mine, but, I, or excuse me, cauliflower. I'm going to steam this cauliflower tonight. So we're going to go ahead and get this going right now. Now, usually, let's take this out right here. You can see this. It's just a bowl of cauliflower. Now, these florets are a little big. So as I put them into the steamer, I like to break them up because they steam a little faster. And don't worry about the stems. You don't really need to worry about it. We're steaming this through, so if the stems get a little thick, just uh, make sure you get them off there. You don't want too much of that on there. We kind of want the florette. So we're just going to break these all up into our steamer. Those are ready to go there. And we're going to steam these through. We want them done, you know, So because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this in our food processor with, uh, like I said, some cream, some milk, uh, some olive oil, some white cheddar, um, salt, pepper, some good, and then basically it's going to be a nice little seasoned, easy to eat dish that's different. Actually, it's a lot better for you too. Now, I'm going to use cream tonight because I like to be fat. But <laughs> if you want to use like 2% milk or something like that, you certainly can. Hell, if you want to use chicken stock to keep it real low, you can do that as well. It's all up to you. So um, that's important. And another thing too, I want to tell you guys real quick about how I feel about recipes. Uh, I get a lot of slack about the cookbook thing and the recipe thing, and we do have some stuff online. Matter of fact, at ptkradio.com uh, uh, right now, we have a couple of the dishes we've done on the other episodes as well. So um, you can find those there, uh, and we'll keep you updated. But here's how I feel about recipes. So the, how, the whole idea of cooking, what I learned very quickly is recipes are a guideline. Remember, this is the food you like to eat. It, just because I make it a certain way, it may not fit your palate. This is the way I like to eat it, okay? So take this recipe tonight, all these recipes, and tweak them. Maybe you like a little more bacon or red onion or garlic in your Brussels sprouts we're going to make tonight. Do it. Nobody's stopping you. So find that good balance. It may take you a couple times. This is 15 years of me making this thing without looking at the recipe. Most of the stuff I make, I don't look at a recipe. You just kind of test. That's the whole idea of the show, really, is to live, love, and learn, right? So we're going to do a little of that tonight. So let's get our meatloaf mixed up so we can go ahead and get it in the oven. And then we'll do our Brussels sprouts right behind. Then we'll make our barbecue sauce and get four. Oh, yeah, before we go any further. The cheers, guys, to episode four. La. My wife is drinking some beautiful Pinot Noir. I, on the other hand, that's good, am having one of the old standards. I have to thank my man Dan Dennis, Dan Lee, Daniel, D Money, D Dog, the Bearded Hamster for introducing me to what I think is just one of the best IPAs that money can buy, Cigar City. Big shout out to Whopper Jr. Uh, this is a delicious beer. I drink a lot of it. I had one in the fridge, so we're drinking it tonight. And I may have my cucumber saison before the night's over. But cheers to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Let's cook. Okay, what meat do I use? This is a three pound jobby tonight. Two and a half to three pounds, I find, makes a, a meat loaf that can cook, uh, that can uh, feed uh, four to six people, you know, or two of me, uh, but pretty much the same. I use one pack of ground sirloin, okay, which is this one right here. And what the difference is, 
If you look on this label, this is Publix by the way, you can see it's 90% lean, 10% fat. So I like a little fat in mine, so that is ground chuck. It is more like 75-25. So that's what I like to do with my meatloaf. So we have our hamburger. Now we do one yellow onion. And uh, you guys like to watch me chop onion, so I'll, I'll chop another onion for you. Just like this. Good sharp knife, making sure you got it on that knuckle when you do it. We're gonna go across one time, all right? And then when you come down, you get this beautiful little dice. And although these aren't super important to be uniform because we're cooking inside the meat and they're definitely gonna get done, you know, just for consistency, it works out great. You wanna kinda of get them as, as close as you can. And what, this is a medium to small onion. You really don't need a lot. Because this flavor goes a long way in this. I have found. And of course we want to run our knife through. Kind of get them all uniform, all mixed together. And like with any loaf type product, you just want to get it in the bowl, man. We're not, it's not real science here. The science is going to come in later when we put a little tricky stuff in here. We're going to do a little tricky. Now, garlic, you have to be careful with garlic and meatloaf. Okay, here's why. Because when you bake garlic like this, it, get, it gets real super aromatic and it can take over. You gotta remember, in cooking I found balance is the key. You want that good balance of all your flavors. See, I kind of squeeze that head out so I don't get it next to my, my uh, fingers. And just be careful when you're, because here's the thing, nothing will slow your knife of cooking down like opening up a finger with a super sharp knife. It's the worst thing ever, so you just wanna, Make sure you just keep your hands free, run your knife through there, make sure you get a good, a good mint. Nice how, look how dry that garlic is, that's crazy. Okay, that's about three cloves of garlic. That's plenty. Again, that's all the chopping we're doing. Now, look inside this magical bowl. Here's where the magic is gonna happen. We need a little bit of breadcrumb. Okay, you'll see why in a second, all right? Now, we've used this magical stuff, see that? Italian seasonings. We're gonna use this again tonight because this, again, it's just good balanced mix. And this is probably about a tablespoon and a half. Again, you don't need a lot. Dry herbs cook strong. Here's one of the mixes I use that people don't really use much. You should have a bottle of this. This is the Herbs de Provence. Mm -hmm. And you can see it has like lavender, marjoram, tarragon, very, Rosemary. yes really Time. really er like aromatic i mean they are and they have this beautiful bouquet of smells now look the tarragon on this it has a mat some of the guys country guys you smelled deer tongue before it has that real weird sweet awesome herby smell that's what that is i put about a teaspoon of that in because i find that when that tarragon hits that fat it actually does kind of open up quite a bit of course we want to get some salt and pepper this is probably about um we'll probably do about a two teaspoons of salt. We want a good, good, healthy grind of pepper. I don't think people use black pepper enough. Yes, ma'am. Say hi to uh, Jackson Colton. Hello, Jackson Fulton. Colton. Colton. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Jackson Colton. Beer. Mm. Delicious. Must. It's a must. Have to have Worcestershire. How many shakes? About that many. How many is that? That's about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Yeah? Yeah, about that. Hold on. I forgot my egg. So we're working on a couple things. Uh, getting some local farms involved in the show so we can showcase uh, local farms, uh, food in our kitchen. We'd love to do that. We want to support those guys as much as possible. So we have an egg in, you can already smell that cauliflower cooking. I can smell and it. A little stanky, but it is a little stinky. It's got a beautiful <laughs> it's like, no, You stop it. Don't call my uh, food stank. Okay, I think we have everything. Here's a little bit of a secret as well. I use a little bit of liquid smoke. Why? Okay, and here's why. It gives a great just kind of earthy flavor to it. I mean, any food cooked over an open fire is great. This actually mimics that very well. And don't let it fool you. What one drop? Two drops, honestly, you don't want to get crazy with that stuff. It can take a dish over in a hurry. All right, let's get in here. So we have salt, pepper, Italian seasonings. We have herbs de Provence. We have salt, like I said, pepper before. We have a little bit of Worcestershire, some breadcrumbs, and an egg. 
And that's pretty much my meatloaf recipes. Let's go ahead and combine it. If you'll notice, watch. I'm not getting in there and like killing it. I'm gonna break this hamburger apart. Why don't you wanna mush it too much? I'll show you. I am gonna wind up mushing it together because that's another little secret that a lot of people don't do. When they talk about their meatloaf, they hear hamburger, hamburger, and they've told so many times on Facebook, you know, to get the best burger, you don't crunch it together, you don't push it down, blah, blah, blah. I like my meatloaf a little dense. And the reason they don't want you to push the, the burger down is because it becomes too flat and dense and it dries out and it's not juicy enough. You don't have that problem because you're basically cooking this in its own fat. You ever notice what's at the bottom of a meatloaf pan when you get done? Yeah. Ass loads of fat. Yep. Okay, so what we don't want, we don't have to worry about that. It's not Our meatloaf is not going to dry out. So if you notice, we're just breaking this apart and kind of combining it. And all I'm doing is kind of pinching it together. And then you'll see as we roll it in, look how well that onion has combined into my meat right yeah yeah super easy and then what we'll, now we'll start kind of pressing it together we're gonna create that Rita uh, miss Rita wants to know what if you were to roast it beforehand would it give you like a sweetness roast what the garlic I'm sorry I, you can do that I mean you can like, again great question here's why you could roast the garlic you could roast a lot of stuff and put it right in the middle of meatloaf man look it's a meatloaf you can put whatever you want. I've seen guys put olives in it, make like Mediterranean meatloaf with rosemary and olives and feta mixed in there. It's what you, and they put lamb in there. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. This is a base to a, a ball of meat roasted in the oven. So it honestly is everything. Tori, my beautiful wife, loves the stereotypical American meatloaf. I do. With that crazy barbecue glaze. You're I, right. I like the mushroom glaze more. We're not going to make that one tonight. I went ahead and kind of formed it into a pan. Yep. Press it down. Probably have a little too much meat in there. Yeah. That should be about two and a half pounds. But we don't care. That looks like a overflow and a uh, oven cleaning. That may be. We're, we're gonna put a <laughs> Miss uh, Thang. Where can Heath get the recipes? Uh, we're gonna put them up tonight. So as soon as we get done doing the show tonight, I'm gonna sit in bed. I'm gonna write them, and uh, our web guy will have them up either tonight or tomorrow morning. You'll be able to get all the stuff. Where uh, at? At ptkradio.com. So we're going to put our meatloaf on a pan, just for exactly what Tori said. Oh, wow. We don't want it You're to. thinking of me. <laughs> what? So we're going to go bottom rack, and I'll, I'll tell you why right now. Do you caramelize the onions before you put them in? I don't. Because I want the onions to cook with the fat and the water coming out of the beef. That way they release their flavor into my meat and not onto the pan that I'm roasting them on. Really, it's that simple. I mean, I've seen guys do that with uh, caramelized onions and roasted garlic and uh, peppers. I mean, all, again, it is limitless. I wouldn't have mushrooms in mine. Like, I love mushrooms in mine, but Tori doesn't like mushrooms. <laughs> uh, so I don't get to enjoy life. Oh, my God. Cry me a river. All right, so. What beer are you drinking? <laughs> come on, man. That, you guys know. It's Highlight Pale Oak. Right there. Right there. Highlight. Yeah? Cigar City. You can get it anywhere. Who told you about that? I'm not telling anybody anymore. <laughs> Because obviously somebody's being uh, Mr. Funny Pants. It's and, me. It's and me. No, and I have no time for Mr. Funny Pants anymore. All right. I can't eat mushrooms. I have a bad thyroid. You can't have mushrooms with a bad thyroid, Who guys. Who that? It, the books. You the just, books say boy, it. The books. The books tell me. You I'm not it. supposed to have broccoli either. You make stuff up. All right. Let's make our glaze. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a non-cooked glaze. Yeah. You can cook it if you want. It does not matter because it's going to cook on top of that meatloaf. We're going to cook this meatloaf for about maybe 30 minutes. On what? 350. Okay. So we're going to cook meatloaf 30 minutes, 350, and then we're going to put our glaze on top. Here's why. If you put your glaze on too early, it's going to turn into a big gummy mess, and it's going to burn because it's got a lot of sugar in it. And the sugar is not going to take being cooked at 350 very well. It's going to turn into that goopy, gloppy, uh, sticky mess that you don't want. You want the glaze just to get to the point where... It's starting to kind of get a little bubbly on top. That's when it's the best. Once it goes past that one point, it starts cooking the water out. All you're going to have to left is a lot of tomato, and it's going to get real kind of tart, and it's not going to have a good flavor. So we're going to start off. We have some organic ketchup. You don't need to have organic ketchup. You can use good old honey. But organic or, ketchup is really good. But this it's is sweeter, right? Freaking delicious. It's just got that beautiful tomato flavor. It's impossible to ignore. Yeah. That's about half a cup. You can use more or you can use less according to how big of a meatloaf you like. And if you like this as a dipping sauce afterwards, which a lot of people do, you can do that. So we're going to go in with a little bit of light uh, brown sugar. 
Mike wants to know why you're not cooking it on the gr big green egg. And I think it's because not everyone has one, yeah. and we're trying to do some stuff that everyone can do. Yeah, I mean, you could use your grill, and I can show you how to do this, but you know, you know I'll tell you something else that's cool. I'm glad you asked that. I won't answer that question because I can't. <laughs> but I will. So, you know what a lot of guys are doing now? I think Outpost does this. I'm not sure. I don't think Greg Ritchie at SoCo does his like this, but his is exceptionally good, by the way. But Chef Julie over at uh, Outpost, where we had a PTK Live, she does her meatloaf, they make it, and then they cut it, and they grill it. So they make it like a day in advance. Of course, restaurants always do, or a lot of them. Now, you can do this. You can make this like on a Sunday night, put it in the oven, and then when you want to grill, instead of grilling burgers or whatever, make everything we're making, get your coals hot, and grill, get some cross marks on your, on your meatloaf over coals. It'll give you that beautiful like grilled flavor, plus you'll have all the flavors, the veggies and the herbs in there as well. It's damn good. I recommend it. Apple cider vinegar. That was about um, a quarter of a cup brown sugar. Okay. Apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Teaspoon. Maybe a little bit more. No biggie. A little bit more than a teaspoon. A little bit more than a teaspoon. All right. Hot mustard. What's the apple cider vinegar do? Whoa. Just adds a little acid to it. How but much? How much hot mustard is that? Probably about a teaspoon. All right. Get some of that, man. Okay. How can they get tickets to the next PTK Live? Um, so if you go to. Um, and I have to double check that they have it set up at Marlowe's out at Lee Vista, out by the airport. Uh, super easy to find. We're going to have it there June 14th, which is a few Wednesdays from now. And uh, you're going to be able to call the restaurant and actually book there. They're going to have a they're going to have a tab on the register where you can give your card number, and I think it's going to be 35 bucks. And you're going to get you know again like we did at Outpost, you're going to get three pairings and a chef surprise. Plus, we're no, we know for a fact we're doing a reception drink again. So we'll get there 30 minutes early, have a nice reception cocktail made with one of the beers, uh, go in, have our food, and then have some fun and prizes. It's going to be a good-ass time. So you can book your tickets there. I think we've already sold half of it out. So if I were you and we announced the number when you can call, I would get your spot because it may get a little crazy over there. Okay. So our glaze, let's taste. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah. Yikes, that's sweet, but you like it like that, right? Okay. Yep. Liquid smoke. Drop, Liquid drop. smoke. Drop, drop. Two drops. Drop, drop. Okay. Immediately you can taste that. Immediately you can taste that liquid smoke. Here. Too sweet. You want a little salt in there. But I don't want to add straight salt. I want flavor with my salt. Best ever. It is. I mean, keep For my in. sushi, so, I know it is. About a tablespoon of soy sauce. Okay. All right. Mm. Uh, Tanya makes meatloaf and muffin tins. You can do that. That's interesting. Look, man, once you get the mix together, <laughs> you can put it in a flat pan and make a sheet out of it if you want. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, man. Mm. That is perfect. Give that a taste with your finger, kid. Mm. Beer All time. Right. Yep, perf. A little bit more mustard, or you think that's fine? No, it's good. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So let's do our sprouts. It looks like our, um, our cauliflower is probably steamed and ready to go. Okay. We're going to let it go a little bit more because you can't, almost can't overcook it. Now, cauliflower has a lot of water in it, so when we put it in our food processor in just a few minutes, we'll make this last. Here's why it's important. Before you start adding liquid when you do purees and vegetables like this, when you're trying to stay a little healthy, uh, when you do this, it's important to understand that you know when you steam these veggies, they have a lot of water in them, so put them in the food processor first. Pulse it, and you'll see we'll do that in a minute. And that way you can see how much liquid you may need to get it up to the consistency you want. If you want that normal mash, or it looks like mashed potatoes, you'll see it'll come together pretty quickly. But if you want a creamy, kind of more of a puree, kind of fancy, where you can do some stuff on the plate, make it look cool, that'll take a little bit more. We'll take from one stage to the next to show you exactly how it progresses. Let's do some sprouts. What are you, what are you drinking? I'm drinking High Life. Yeah? Yeah. High Life Pale Ale. Who introduced uh, you to it? This joke is getting very old. It's so funny. <laughs> All right, Brussels sprouts. Makes me laugh, so. So this is like the bane of every kid in the world, right? Like nobody likes Brussels sprouts. They're ucky, they stink when you cook them, blah, blah, blah. I know because I was that guy. I hated these things. But as I started cooking, I started noticing they are kind of started becoming trendy. I was like, well, hell, I mean, people are eating them. I'll try them. So I tried. I actually found a recipe on Facebook, of all places. And the first time I roasted them, I just roasted them. Well, they were amazing. I mean, simply amazing. So we're going to make those tonight. Now, these are 
Uh, uh, these are actually just Publix Brussels sprouts. I got these. Now, you, you can't get organic ones. We love cooking with organic food. I didn't have time to go to Whole Foods tonight or one of the markets, so I'm just cooking with Publix food. Now, if you notice when I cut that, I take these leaves and I set them aside, and I'll tell you why in a second. And when you cut them, I like to cut it and then roll it a quarter and then cut again. Just please be careful not to whack your fingers. Of course, that will be no good. Into a big bowl. Michael, we're gonna make you love Brussels sprouts. I hated them too. Yeah. And These are amazing. Yeah, they are simply, they, I mean, this is one of the biggest surprises in all my years of cooking. My discovery of the Brussels, my rediscovery or discovery of the Brussels sprout, sprout has changed dramatically because, you know, of course you eat them boiled and they will, I mean, they'll gag a sailor. It doesn't, I mean, it, <laughs> it, 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 they're the worst thing ever. But when you quarter them like this, here's what you do. People ask me, like, last time I cooked these, people are like, why, why don't you just cut them in half? So if I cut them in half, check yeah. it out. That's all the cooking surface I have. I like roasted vegetables. I like that crispy outside. How do I get it crispier? You're like, well, how do I do it? Well, it's simple. You actually just quarter it again. And look, by doing that, I've created more surface per bite to be able to get that nice brown flick, that brown uh, color that I'm looking for to give it the color and the texture I want. Because they're gonna get a little crispy on the outside. By the way, these flakes are the best kept secret in snacking history. And once you learn how to trim your sprouts, these, little, these outside flakes will come right off. And I like the bigger sprouts because they give me more flakes, and you'll see why. Some of them are going to make it into the bowl. That doesn't matter at all. But my buddy Yulin, uh, Aberdeen Strong, <laughs> uh, the Hodges boys from Pine Hills, love those guys. Um, after I did PTK, when, uh, I was talking about these Brussels sprouts, and uh, he made them, and, uh, the leaves, and he absolutely loved them because I made them with the guys uh, from Tom and Dan. By the way, did their show today. I'll be on corporate time tomorrow night, I think, so you guys check that out. Why are you whispering that? Say it loud. <sighs> corporate time tomorrow night. <laughs> so he made these at home, and he was a guy who's, you know, all they eat is haggis and uh, whiskey. That's all uh, Scottish people do. They eat haggis and whiskey. Occasionally, they'll mix in a potato and a beet. Maybe some lamb. And he loved them because we take these little we take these little leaves, and you toss them in olive oil, salt, and pepper, and a little bit of garlic. You throw them right in the oven, and they turn into this beautiful vegetable chip with so much flavor, you can't even believe it. Seriously. What uh, Shun knife is that? This is the Tenet Chef Knife from Shun. I have their San, is it Santuco or Sartuco? I can never remember how to say that. Hey, are you going to do a cookbook? No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> not anytime soon. Why not? Because I don't want to. Mikey likes pickled beets. Well, tell my kids some congratulations on his love for pickled beets. <laughs> you know, I'm not, how, how can I stop a man and his love for pickled beets story? Jimmy, what are you pairing dinner with? A punch in the face. <laughs> what is this? What is that? Highlight. Yeah. Uh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Is it delicious? Is it, is it your favorite? I hate saying that because <laughs> I never want to piss off anybody that may want to sponsor the segment or show. By the way, we are opening that up. If you want to, if you have a product you'd like to have featured on the show, uh, you can contact us at primetimekitchen at gmail.com. We are not afraid to offset the cost of doing this show by. Uh, Dan off. said that's a good beer. Dan who? Dan Whiting. Oh, hey, thanks, Dan. It is a good beer. You're right. You have good taste. When are you going to Wassie's next? Uh, actually, I have to think about that. I, I talked to Jan recently. Uh, the Egg Fest just put them in the grave, dude. I mean. You guys simply do not understand the Wasis family. Not they're not even real. They're not even human. They are machines. I mean, they're I'm I, I could not begin to tell you they're they're superheroes. Uh, you know, and, and when you go over there and you encounter people uh, hanging out with them and encountering the Wasi family, uh, you will see immediately that these guys are straight up rock stars in the Melbourne area, and they have been for a very long time. Uh, we are very grateful at their sponsorship of Primetime Kitchen. They were, uh, we got super lucky finding a sponsor that has that much integrity and, and a community love. Julie um, wants to know if you will ever post your recipes before so they can cook along with you. You know what, I have to tell you, uh, somebody mentioned the cooking along thing recently and uh, it, it may have been you. Uh, I'm gonna do that, that's a great idea. Uh, I can't tell you I'm gonna do it in the next couple weeks. We actually have a new camera system we're just working on for next week called the Mevo. So we can give you guys better shots and hopefully better audio of the show as we cook. 
We have an up and down shot here, shot of the oven as we go in and check the temperatures and stuff. So as we fancy, do, as, yeah, fancy. fancy, yeah, fancy time. So as we do that <laughs> and make these progressions, I mean, this is only our fourth show. Um, I think I think I like that idea. So I yeah. think, I think you probably look forward to that in the next few weeks. That I'll post the recipe and say, hey guys, here's what we're doing. Go to the bot, go to the store, buy your stuff, and we'll take some time. We'll do it together, and you guys can eat when we eat. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Dustin says that he prefers to cut his vegetables up with an authentic 14th century samurai sword. Well, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I mean, what, do you, what, what, what answer can I have to that? Go boy. Did I just say go boy? <laughs> why did you say that? What is happening? Hold on for a second. I need to figure out why I said that. <laughs> they want to know if this sponsor, or if this How Tuesday is sponsored by High Life. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Look, they can certainly sponsor it. Call somebody and have them come sponsor. All right, so we have enough Brussels sprouts. And usually, here's what I would do. I connect this to the side so you can see. So take these beautiful leaves. Like, look at these. These are absolutely perfect. And they're tough. They're kind of resilient. So that means when they cook, they get nice and crispy. And you want to cook them. So what we do is, you normally, you put these into a pan, olive oil, salt, pepper, slight olive oil, and a little bit of minced garlic and then throw them in the oven and roast them at 350. It only takes about 15 minutes and guys, you will have one of the most savory, delicious snacks. Now, we're gonna show you when we plate these tonight, I'm gonna show you how I love finishing these Brussels sprouts to really drive it above and beyond the norm. So we're gonna put these right back into our, our dish here. So we're not gonna do okay. that thing tonight. Okay, so we have our sprouts in. So we wanna do half of a red onion. Now this is all dependent, of course, on how many sprouts you're gonna make. Red onion, we're gonna slice it thin. Break it up. Yeah. And we go, if you look, I'm gonna show you, the, just sit right there, I'll show you the ratio. Okay. Now, that ratio is pretty good. If you look, when we get down, we toss around. Now, you want a predominant amount of red onion because they have the best flavor. My gosh, I can eat them like apples. These things are so good. So I think we do need a little bit more because we have, we have quite a few sprouts there. Have you ever had the Funky Buddha? I have had Funky Buddha. I'll tell you what I had, guys. You want a great beer recommendation? I'll give you a damn good beer recommendation. So Tori and I had a business meeting for Primetime Kitchen at Luke's uh, Kitchen up in Maitland. Brand new, it's the same guys who bring you Prada and, uh, and Luma on Park Ave. Two of the most heralded restaurants in the city of Orlando. We only had appetizers, but it was really good. Yeah, it was good. But what I did have is a beer, and I never had it. So if you guys know about this, and I don't, don't call me out. I don't care. But it's called Namaste from Dogfish Head. And I have to tell you... I mean, it was damn, damn, damn good. Mike wants to know um, if you should use a paring knife to cut smaller things like Brussels sprouts and grape tomatoes. No. No. no you should not. No, Mike. <laughs> you should not. Okay. That's about two tablespoons of garlic in. That's a perfect amount. Okay. Actually, it's not enough. Okay. So, we're going to... And again, this is one of those dishes where garlic goes so well with this, you almost can't go wrong. You can almost put as much as you want in there. Because when olive oil and garlic roast together, we know it's like magic. They think that you cut about 159-ish Brussels sprouts? Yeah, that's about right. Probably about 159 cubes in there. Worst number ever. <laughs> okay. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> some guy, some thing. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have good old bacon. Doesn't matter what you get. Obviously, the better quality bacon you get, the better quality product you're gonna have. But it does not require right brand bacon or anything like that. Matter of fact, you can use pancetta. You could use a lot of things. What you want is smoky and salty, whatever makes it. This is four slices of Smithfield bacon, original bacon. Okay. Nothing big. We're gonna strip this right down the middle. All right, then nice. When cooking steak, how long should you lead, uh, let it rest before serving? Eight to ten minutes. Eight to ten minutes. On a, on an angle. Don't let it sit in its own juice, please. 
it'll soften up that, that crisp you look for so much. Take it in. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna bring it over to you. Okay. Make it in. I feel like we need to see a little closer. Yeah, that's fine. Would prosciutto be a good choice? Prosciutto works fine. Matter of fact, the first one I tried with this guy was prosciutto. So that's a good call. Let's check our meatloaf real quick. Got a nice one. Now, so you have to have your meat thermometer because you want the inside of that, I think like 145 degrees, something like that. All right, salt. This is probably gonna be about two teaspoons. Pepper, good grind of pepper. Somebody said you need to dry uh, Zaycon bacon. Okay. Lori said it's to die for. Where do you get it? Where do you get it, Lori? I forget they can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so I keep repeating it. <laughs> Mike wants to have a knife off. Okay. I do not want to have my, uh, a knife off of Mike. Olive oil. <laughs> All right. Now. Um, you didn't do salt bay. Yeah, it did. I oh, mean, did. I'm not doing salt bay. <laughs> I'm not doing. <laughs> my forearm is so fat, I salt bay into my shoes. That's not a good look. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to salt bay into your shoes on TV. So what are you drinking? Mm. Highlight pale. What? Highlight pale. Highlight pale ale. Yeah. I got you. That's enough blunt for those guys. All right. So <clears throat> sprouts are done. Uh, baking pan. Where'd it go? It's already inside. All right. Now, there's another reason. I got a little crafty on you guys I didn't share. There's another reason why we didn't uh, put the sprouts in at the same time as the meatloaf. And here's why. So at the end of this sprout dish, we're going to roast them for a little bit. But right before we take these out, we're going to broil the top of them to make sure we get that brown that we want. Okay? And right before that... We're gonna add one to two, depending on how much you like this, diced up plum tomatoes, all right? And that's a little bit of another secret because that adds a beautiful amount of acid. And when we finish this, how we're gonna finish it, which you'll see in just a little bit, you'll understand why. With cooking, as I've learned it, and again, guys, I'm not a chef, I'm a cooking enthusiast. So as I've learned, balance is everything. You got sweet, you want a little salt. You got savory, you want a little bit of, um, Maybe a little bit of sweet. You have creamy, you want crunchy. You know what I'm saying? So you want to be able to hit those, all of those flavor factors. And this Brussels sprout dish with bacon and red onion and sprouts and garlic, it's real savory. So you want something a little sweet. And we'll show you what the surprise is a little bit later. It's a little secret. So with your hands, you want to toss all this together. And the reason why I'm doing it with my hands and not just doing the old chef toss like that and look all fancy is I want that bacon to break apart because when I put it together, you know, that bacon likes to stick together. I want that bacon to break apart and be all throughout this dish. And more importantly, I want to smear that fat kind of onto these Brussels sprouts before I throw them in the oven. Look, it's kind of sticking to me already. Yeah. That, my friends, it's ain't, delicious. Ain't, ain't, not, ain't nothing but good. Sprouts in. Top rack. Now. Amy said you should try their olive oil they make locally in Ocala. You know what? Clear Creek Farm. Dude, let me tell you something. Heather has been on that like crazy. My partner at Primetime Kitchen, Heather McPherson, all her own Facebook, please. She's awesome. She'll be on the show tomorrow. What's her history? She, for 35 years, was the food editor for the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, she's kind of a badass and uh, not to mention an awesome person. Uh, on top of that, she just got back from Paris, France, and she's a foodie, so tomorrow, or excuse me, this week on Primetime Kitchen, you actually get to hear what a foodie did in Paris, France, and a number of other cool places as well. Oh, let me throw out a, another shameless plug for somebody else that you guys should be following if you're not. So there's a chef in Orlando, if you haven't heard of him, his name is Kevin Fonzo. Kevin owns uh, the uh, restaurant K on Edgewater Drive in College Park. Uh, it's a fascinating restaurant. It is genuinely one of Orlando's gems and uh, I think kind of a local legend really. Kevin Fonzo's Facebook page is a follow that is impossible not to have. That guy has the life of James Bond. All he does is travel around the world, cook and eat great food. And he's like the Anthony Bourdain of Orlando, but cooler. Uh, so Kevin Fonzo, give him a follow on Facebook and catch up with him. Also, another great follow, three uh, great follows total. Uh, Greg Ritchie, who owns Soco in downtown Orlando, also put some cool stuff up. And Kathleen Blake, 
who owns the Rusty Spoon, who have all been guests on Primetime Kitchen, also is a great follow with some cool stuff. Again, heralded restaurants in the city of Orlando that are owned by, owned by locals, and most of the stuff in the restaurant is sourced locally, so they're great places to support local food. Local, now, local, local. Yes. Always. So, we're going to make this uh, puree real quick. Now, normally, this is where I would take a little break. I would grab my beer. I'd go sit down or whatever. Because, what beer? What yeah, beer are you grabbing? I like. Because, <laughs> you know, what's happening? My oven's doing all the work for me. And let me tell you guys something while i got a few minutes here. Um, so, when you're cooking during the week, this is what I learned with a busy family. I don't know, Tori and I, you know, we have four children. And they're all at the same age, and they're all extremely active. So, we really didn't have a lot of time in the evening. As much as I love to cook... By the time we got home, everybody was exhausted. Of course, you guys know I get up very early in the morning, and Tori's got a busy career, and all of our kids are very busy. So I found that, man, build a menu that uses the oven in the week. You'll find that you use fewer dishes. Also, you'll find that it's easier to do, and you don't spend so much time on the stovetop. And it is amazing what you can do in the oven. You can do casserole dishes. You can roast off vegetables like we're doing. By the way, it's better for you. Um, there's just magical what you can do with it. So take my advice. And uh, start using your oven a little bit more because, I mean, I, find, I bet you'll find it'll save you time and you'll like your food better because there's nothing better than roasting food, guys. It's my favorite way to cook, truthfully. Beer break. Get food on your hand. All right, here we go. Cauliflower puree. So I told you guys I was going to take you through both stages or all stages of this puree, and I'm going to. Cauliflower is really soft, which we don't mind, and you can already see the water in it. I mean, I'm literally, it's just kind of turning into mush already. Because we cook quite a bit. All right. That is a lot. Into our food processor. Yeah. Okay. I bet people are going, that is disgusto mundo. It is not because, disgusting. Because people are always like, oh, cauliflower sucks. It's the worst. When and it, it is not the worst. Man, let me tell you what. You roast this stuff, and I have to beat my kids off with a boat paddle to get them away from it because they will eat it, everything. I got one in this house. Oh, oh my god. I honestly think her pelvis has grown to the stove because, every, but look, I'm telling you straight up, our family picture should be everybody else doing stuff and her cooking food. She loves it. All right. Uh, this is a cauliflower puree or a cauliflower mash. Salt. That's our first salting. You got to remember, we're tasting stuff in this kitchen. Pepper. Somebody said our backsplash is too much. <laughs> What? <laughs> can't win. Can't win. I, it's can't something to losing, easy huh? clean. <laughs> what the heck? Can't, can't win for losing. Let me be the first to apologize for our backsplash. <laughs> uh, Mike said cauliflower world is pulling up right now. That's what he heard. Oh, Dan, Dan's on. Dan he said good. cook, Mr. Egg. <laughs> By the way, his child is a uh, petty thief. <laughs> Daniel Dennis's child, Maisie, is a petty thief. This is Cabot Aged White Cheddar. Why white? Well, I'm a racist. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Stop. So it's just white cheddar because this is real sharp. Okay, so here's the deal. You want super sharp white cheddar because it is really, and when you cook it, it turns out, it has that real super cheesy flavor, okay? So we have this going. Bump. <laughs> You can already see it transforming, right? No liquid in that. And it's hot, look at the steam coming out. That's what you want. Yeah. Because we're gonna melt the cheese, that's already, I can eat that right now. It is freaking delicious. Now, I don't wanna do that yet. Oh my God. Is it good? It's so good. <laughs> Let me look at it. Tori, it's just got this beautiful nutty flavor. Take it, I mean, it's just. No, it's okay, I can. But look at the peak it holds up, look. Yeah, See? that's so good. I can serve that right now. So, cheese in. Oh, it needs more salt. More salt. Okay, cheese in. Yep. Okay, for you. Now, let me let me share something else. There's another there's another little surprise, a little thing that I've seen chefs do, and it is crazy, and it works. And here's what it is. So, whenever you have anything that uh, that you cook with cheese. Primarily cheddar. Parmesan has a magical effect at providing a little bit of a nutty sharpness to cheese that are super creamy. Okay. Okay? 
Now, if you'll notice, I have very little Parmesan because this stuff is <laughs> insanely good. We will sit around this house on this cutting board and I'll sit with my knife with a block of brand new parm. And we will eat some parm. <laughs> and I will shave it <laughs> into paper thin slices and we will sit here and drink wine and eat sh shaved slices of Parmesan all night long. Dustin said that he's currently squatting in a foreclosed 10,000 square foot home in Windermere that suited his taste. He has no power. What tips on the Coleman stove? Well, he wants to cook inside <laughs> in a really small room. Deep breaths, man. Just deep breaths. Get that, get it in there. And then just call me later when you find out what that does, all right? <laughs> mm. Anyway, so when you have real super strong creamy cheeses, like extra sharp white cheddar, okay? You want to offset that a little bit with some sharpness. Parmesan is perfect because it does have creamy, but it also has nutty and it has salt. So that's why we like adding it there. So now we're going to do the puree. Okay. Hey, where'd you get this food processor? Garage sale. <laughs> it's a true story. Heavy cream. Only about a tablespoon. That fortifies that great creamy flavor of the cheese and the parm. Because what is Alfredo sauce, guys? It's butter, Parmesan cheese, and heavy cream. That's all it is. All right. Now look at this craziness. Okay. So now look at this. So now you have this beautiful, look at that. So it looks whipped, right? And it's a, so this puree, you, when you plate, you can do some really cool stuff with it. You ever seen the chefs? I'll show you real quick. The chefs will take that dollop like that. And smear it. And they'll make it look cool. Or they'll put it in a piping bag and they'll pipe it, whatever the case may be. You know, we're not wasting that, whatever. What are you drink? Are you pairing this with anything? <laughs> Right. He stopped talking to me. Okay, so I'm gonna do. Please don't, chefs. Turn away. Turn away. White truffle oil, and only two drops. Why? What's wrong with that? So no, nah, truffle oil is kind of hacky. Uh, we don't care about stuff like that, but it does have a really again. Truffle oil has a really cool effect on cheeses, specifically parm. It reinforces that that kind of real. Tell me the difference in that, sister. Is that crazy or what? How much different that is? I mean, oh, yeah. that's amazing. So now, let me tell you why I did all of this tonight, because that's done. Okay. And here's why you can make that way in advance. Throw it in the microwave, reheat it, dude. You're not going to kill it. Seriously, you can make it in advance if you want. Pop it in the microwave, reheat it, serve it. It does not matter. It's not going to change the texture of anything. So why I built this dish the way I did tonight with this creamy stuff. Let's talk about balance. Meatloaf is hunk of basically roasted hamburger meat with herbs. So it's very savory. Now we are gonna have that glaze on top and that is gonna offer a little sweet. These Brussels sprouts, again, very savory. Bacon and roasted sprouts and all that other stuff. And basically what you want is, you want something to offset that with a little bit of sweet. But when it comes to all of that, you want something cheesy and a little bit creamy and that's what this cauliflower is gonna do for us. It's gonna break up all that savory flavor that we have with the meatloaf and the Brussels sprouts. We're gonna get a nice creamy, cheesy fix uh, with that. And it's gonna add a lot of flavor. It really is. It's almost gonna turn out like a sauce, you'll see, when we do this dish together. Thank you. I bought that truffle oil in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, it's easy. You can find it pretty much anywhere. And a lot of guys don't use it because it's, it has a real synthetic flavor to it. Unfortunately, I'm not buying white truffles or truffles to make uh, Are they expensive? <laughs> yeah. well, they're, they're very expensive. Actually, it's funny. We mentioned Kevin Fonzo earlier. One of the trips that he does uh, yearly, he goes to Umbria or Umbria, Spain, and they go truffle hunting. They have dogs that can smell them, and they go truffle hunting. Well, he put a picture up on Facebook of him holding his apron just like this, and he had about a hand, like, you know, what looked to be like 12 cloves of garlic in his hands, and he said that's about $1,500 worth of truffles black truffles. It is an amazing flavor. It's impossible to explain. The only explanation is to say it tastes like truffle. It is its own flavor. Hey, Shireen's on. Hey, Shireen. How you doing? Good to see you. Oh, can she eat? She cannot eat. Not yet. Sun's oh, not. the sun's not down, Shireen. The sun isn't down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the temperature. Oh, and he I left. Disappeared. <laughs> I disappeared. Oh, there it is. I'm going to check the tip on my meatloaf real quick. 
They want to watch you eat later. Oh, I'm not. They're not. That's, <laughs> that sounds mildly sexual, and I'm not down. You know? Alright, let's check the on our meatloaf. And it looks like we have it at. Are you using cauliflower to mask the taste of the Brussels sprouts? <laughs> what is everybody so for hating on these, these vegetables I'm making tonight? Look, anybody can throw a can of green beans on the stove. The show's not about cooking green beans. I do I like can. canned green beans. I know you do. <laughs> That's one of the odd reasons I love you. I don't know why. You eat, yeah, you will only eat canned new potatoes. That's so crazy. All right. Our meatloaf has a little bit to go. So we're going to wait a few minutes before we put that, um, uh, before we put... Oh, Boo's on. The glaze on. Boo said, what if you grated a little nutmeg on that cauliflower? You could. I've never tried it. I mean, you could. I, nutmeg is an odd flavor for me at all, to be honest with you. I don't. I don't do a lot of nutmeg. Um, I'll tell you what I did make this weekend while we have, while we have a few minutes because that that's almost ready to put that glaze on. So we cooked on the egg this weekend. Um, and here's why I tell you guys to always try to kind of think out of the box. So as I taste beers these days, the beer I'm having tonight, <laughs> uh, Pale Ale, Cigar City. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Spend some money with me, guys. Uh, <laughs> no kidding. After tonight, are you right, kidding? Right, it's crazy. So, um, on the Monsters, Friday, we have the beer of the week. Well, we had the guys from, gosh, I can't remember the name of the brewery. We had their growler over there. It's like Ocean something. And they brought in this Imperial Stout, Milk Imperial Stout. And it was fortified with some coffee and some chocolate or something like that. It, just had, it was this beautiful beer. It really was. The minute I tasted it, I thought as a chef, as a cook, I had like... I want to cook that down and make a sauce out of it. Well, Sunday, we had some friends over. I got a rack of baby backs from Petty's, the Berkshire pork, which is absolutely delicious. And I took this. This is another must-have in your kitchen, uh, by the way. Hey, what if somebody wants to sponsor? Where do they go? Just primetime, uh, primetimekitchen at gmail.com. Just email us, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, holler at you. We'll try to work something out. We don't, we don't even know yet what we're doing, but we want to just maybe help drive some people to a product. This is one of the best rubs I've ever tasted it in my life. It is so good. So Lane Barbecue, Ryan Lane, um, is one of the nicest guys as well. He has an entire uh, uh, mix of these spices, which we're going to be bringing to you soon. We're going to have some PTK label stuff we're working on as we speak. And believe it or not, a version of this is going to be in there. This is really, really good. Ancho uh, peppers, uh, espresso beans ground up with brown sugar, garlic, salt, pepper. It's really good. A really unique flavor that we love at the house. So we did a rub of that all over our ribs, cooked them on the egg, in the oven, finished them on the egg, and I cooked that beer down, and I used that as my barbecue sauce. You know, ketchup, brown sugar in there, a little bit of red wine reduction as well to sweeten it up, and it was absolutely delicious. I just used it as a drizzle on the ribs afterwards, and the guys loved them. I also took another sponsor of the show. Okay, you guys remember these guys. The Bonjour Dressings. They were on Primetime Kitchen just a little while ago. Well, let me tell you something, guys. They have a mango dressing called the uh, Al, Al Morada Mango or Mango Al Morada or something like that. And it's a mango-based cream dressing. Well, I'm sitting here and I've got 24 chicken wings. I'm like, what am I going to do with these chicken wings? I wanted something different. So I chopped up a couple jalapenos. I kept the seeds in because you want that extra heat. I put that mango dressing, a little bit of vinegar because I want it to penetrate the skin. And I tossed them all together with the chicken wings. I put them in my fridge for about a half an hour. Mangoes are the best. My God. On the grill, roasted. Wow. I saved about a cup of that mango sauce to the side. Mm. Cooked that down with some more jalapenos and a little bit of white wine in there. And then tossed my wings in that sauce. Guys, they I, people ate the bones. They were incredible. So again, just because it says salad dressing doesn't mean it's just for salad dressing. Look at actually what it is. It's vinegar, it's water, whatever the case may be. And look at those individual things with the flavors and then use that to your advantage while you cook. Your fridge and your pantry are full of stuff to make great cooking ideas out of. You just have to pay attention, that's all. It's simple. Let's put our glaze on this meatloaf. So you can see our fats rendering on the sides here. You can see it right here? Yeah. We have some good rendered fat, so we know it's cooking and we're already about 120 degrees inside. So this is the point where I like to put on my glaze. As you can see, super complicated application process. Okay. Can you use um, espresso rubs on brisket? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, they said you have to try the raspberry rub. How did oh. it egg fest? Oh, really? I didn't try that. I didn't see it. Crazy flavor. He was so busy, I didn't have anything to. So, our glaze on. 
Does, yeah. that look, does that look pretty common, guys? Look at that glaze now, because when we bring it out, it's going to turn this beautiful dark red-brown color, and that's when we know that we'll have it exactly how we want it. I'm going to bump this up to 400, and you're going to, oh. and you're going to see what we're going to do in a minute with these sprouts. I want the beet look to be done before the sprouts, because I don't want to do what I have to do to the sprouts to the meatloaf. Because with my glaze on, if I turn the oven up to broil, it's gonna turn that, that glaze black, it's gonna start burning and it's gonna ruin our meatloaf. I want my meatloaf done about 10 minutes before my sprouts. That'll give my meatloaf time to rest and it'll get a time to settle where I can take it out and that's gonna make about four to six servings. And I do have quite a few sprouts in there. We'll be able to six, four, uh, serve four to six people with this meal easily tonight. Easily. We're not doing dessert tonight, though. Did anybody make the mango dessert or anything like that? Anybody say? Mm. And did anybody go to Primetime Kitchen's website, uh, Facebook page, and try to name this guy right here? Oh, yeah. We want to we wanna name him. Okay, so I did, uh, I did a corporate time today with Tom and Dan, and Daniel was talking to me during the break. He goes, what's your guy's name? And I'm like, well, what do you mean, what's his name? He goes, well, it's got to have a name. I'm like... Well, it doesn't have to have a name. He goes, dude, your guy has to have a name. So if you go to Primetime Kitchen's Facebook page, I actually put a post up there. We want to name this guy. And what we'll do is if you name him, we wind up liking your name, we'll give you a big Primetime Kitchen uh, swag bag uh, full of cool stuff and maybe even buy you into the Marlowe's gig. Who knows if it's before that. If not, we'll buy you into a gig or kick you a free ticket or something. We'll treat you right. We're good peeps. There you go. How's that wine tonight, by the way? It's delicious. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. It is. It's it's really good. Any questions? Got about uh, uh, maybe two. FYI, green olives are awesome in meatloaf. Yep, they are. Who, who cleans the kitchen? <laughs> Sometimes this one. <laughs> last night or last time then we had it, we made a mess. Oh, and, that was a that, um, that was all hands on deck. Yeah, because we had a fire alarm go off. And, yeah. and, uh, and we went up cleaning the kitchen after that. That was uh that was a brutal. That was a long night. That was a long night. Hey, look, man, if you share this video, I can't thank you enough. We've been getting a lot of views, and it's going to really kind of help us keep the show going as we kind of get a few sponsors to take care of the cost of the, of the stuff because it's costing us like 80 bucks a week to do the show, which is no big deal. I'm not complaining by any means, but, um, but it is kind of a cool thing that you guys are sharing, which we appreciate. At the end of the video, if you don't mind, just give us a share, and that uh, gets the word out to everybody. And, and let them know that we want to keep it going and bring you guys bigger and better things. And uh, we have some really, really cool stuff on the horizon. We're in negotiations for a couple of venues right now. Do our first Primetime Kitchen uh, Presents with some of the chefs we've had on the show before. And some cool flavors, some whiskeys, some beers, some wines. A really cool event for you guys who have supported the show for a while. Uh, of course, with us at all times, we try to keep the cost as low as possible so that you guys can enjoy yourself without breaking the bank. We never want the tickets to be so much that you have to kind of worry about it. We always want to be in that $35, 40 you know, dollar range because we think that you know you guys could pull that for a date night or something like that. This is going to be a really cool event, though. I mean, it really is. We can't wait, and we're in the uh, planning processes as we speak. Um, is there anything else we're going to talk that we need to tell them about? They want to know what kind of beer, I mean, what kind of wine I'm having. This is actually, um, this is a wine called Etude, I believe, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit more expensive than we normally drink. This bottle of wine is probably about $35. Um, and we have it. I think we got it. It's a usually year. 11. Yeah, no, I'm no, not no, bougie. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I am not bougie. <laughs> yeah. Don't you're make little, it sound little, like I'm bougie. You're a little bougie. I'm not bougie. You're, you're a tiny bit bougie. <laughs> nope. So, tiny bit bougie? A little bit. All right. Oh yeah. my gosh. You guys are both lying. So, what we usually drink, we like to keep our wine purchases under $20. And by the way, guys, there are tons of great wine choices. Tori's a Pinot Noir drinker. I'm a cab drinker. Either way, you can find great bottles of wine under twenty dollars. And if you're a Sam's or a Costco member, that wine selection they have is no joke. Uh, Decoy Pinot is one of the best ones out there, and it's like eighteen ninety nine a bottle. Hey, honestly. lime prime. That's the color. Lime prime. I get it. I get it, George. I get it. We got it, George, but it still wasn't good. <laughs> we got it, George, but you failed miserably. My my bad, George. My bad, you failed. They want to know when you're going two hours with uh, PTK. Oh, uh, prime time. Uh, two hours of live content? Yep. Well, funny you should mention that. Um, geez, that's so good. Yeah? I mean, that's so good. Um, so the two-hour thing really is kind of going now. We've been playing uh, older shows on the Sunday morning replay, because if you guys don't know, the show starts at 7 now. We play one of the older shows until 8, and then the new content kicks in. 
Um, actually, the big holdup right now is working out the schedule with Heather and our production team to make sure that everybody can stay two hours. We record the show on Wednesday, so we need to make sure that we can stay two hours. And plus, the show only plays an hour on Fridays. So what we're going to wind up doing is playing one hour of the two-hour broadcast on Fridays, and then Sunday you have to tune in here the other hour. Uh, but it won't matter a lot of times because we're going to wind up breaking those hours up where you may hear one guest the first hour, and that guest is completely gone the next hour is somebody else. Hell, we may start it this week because we're recording two shows this week. Uh, also... Uh, we are doing the Harry's Poolside Bar and Grill. That oh, tasting, my fav- oh that's my one God. of my favorites. I love it. That tasting is coming up soon, and I, if they have seats available, it is the best $50 ticket. It really is one of the better $50 tickets you can get. Chef Tallaluna is a monster chef. He's so good, and we paired up. I forget who the beer company is this week. Actually, I think it changed, so we got to make sure we have the right one. If you go to um, Rosen's website... Or if you go to ptkradio.com, we're going to have that link up soon that jumps you right to the page where you can get your tickets online. I wouldn't walk up because I'm not 100% sure uh, there will be anything left. Um, uh, so I want to make sure that you guys had that opportunity to do that. I, I, I remember the last time we had a weird hurricane come through or something, and <laughs> like that weird storm that came through. and kind of oh, yeah. yeah, people tripped out, and uh, we had a couple of people drop out. We still did almost a full house, but it's only like 60 people. That includes a reception beer. Yeah. Five dishes yeah, paired with beers. And, buddy, let me tell you, it's not a four-ounce pour. They put a pitcher of the beer on the table with you, plus the dessert. It is an amazing evening. It only takes about a couple hours, and you're downtown at Point Orlando. From there, you can go to the Eye and ride there. You can go do whatever you want down there. So it's it's actually a cool night. Tori and I use it as a date night every time we do it. It's a Harry's Poolside Bar and Grill with Rosen uh, down on I Drive. So just do some searching. You'll find it. We'll, we'll put it up on ptkradio.com. Blake's pausing House of Cards to watch our How Tuesday. Oh, that's that's pretty strong because House of Cards is a really good show. <laughs> like an exceptionally good show. Let's take a look at our sprouts real quick and see where we are. Oh yeah, we want to turn these. So check it out. Okay. So let's get our. Uh, oh yeah, here's the <laughs> We're such we're such goose. Look at that. You ready? Yeah. yeah so we we'll do this real quick. Okay. So as you can see, yeah, we're starting to kind of get a little brown on top. All right, no big deal. What we want to do is we we'll take our tongs. We're gonna move around a little bit. Because we want all we want that all the surfaces as much of the the sprout to get on that bottom pan surface as we can, and they're already steaming and they're already getting to that point where they're starting to get. If you look at that one, see how it's a little translucent? Yeah. That thing's going to start caramelizing soon. Look how some of them already have. See that? And I've increased the oven to 400 degrees for a reason, because I like to stage cook these. 350 gets them to that point. Look at my meatloaf there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be nice. And see how we're boiling in the pan right there at the bottom? Yeah. We're not far there. Yet. So those will go in. Now here's what here's the secret of the Brussels sprouts. At 350, they're gonna cook nice and slow, but they're not gonna roast on the outside as much. At 350, by the time they get cooked inside, the outside's gonna be too done. Yeah. And you're not gonna get a good body. You're gonna get it's gonna be crunchy, it's gonna be good, but the more you, the more brown these get, kind of mm-hmm. they get a little bit bitter. So what I like to do is 350 for about the first 20 minutes, then 400 until you see that brown kick in. Yeah. And then the last few minutes, what we're gonna do is now, I only have one tonight, but uh, usually I would have two of these. This is a plum tomato. Okay. I think that's what it is. Roma or plum. Love these little tomatoes. I think this is Heather's favorite tomato. And it's, I think tomato season's in. I know mango is. Oof, ah. Now, why tomato on this? Well, for one thing, not adding it in the beginning, too much water. Right? Way too much water. But... Tomato does have a great little bit of acid in there. And what we're going to do is with this, it, it's going to give a nice little bright flavor. The way that you, when you do lemon juice, there's just a magical thing that lemon juice does to any dish. It gives this beautiful bright flavor, and it's amazing what it does. And you can taste it immediately. Now, that's not much, but really that's all we need. I would usually, if I was doing this before, because we have so many sprouts, I would probably have one more of those tomatoes because they're pretty small. So right before we do the broiling thing, we're going to pull them out. We're going to sprinkle these tomatoes on. And then we're going to broil the top. We're going to get those damn things really, really crispy on the outside. And they are going to be glorious. And this thing... <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> glorious! This plates, <laughs> this plates so quickly. Because once the... This is done. Yep. So once this is done, once the meatloaf is done, which is only about maybe 10 more minutes or maybe 5 minutes or whatever. Yep. That comes out and rests. Then my sprouts finish. It's cut the meatloaf. 
plate the sprouts, get the uh, get the puree on the on the plate, and you're done. You're ready to go. Yep. So we only have a few more minutes to go. Those are browning up real nice. Again, they're requesting for you to give the um, ingredients before the show. Mm -hmm. But we should probably do it a couple of days before the show because I like if, they wanna, if they want to, if they want to cook with, you know. Yeah, I think Julie brought that up earlier, right? Is it Julie? Yeah, Julie. So I think that's a great idea. And it's been mentioned before. So I think what we'll do next week, we'll start this. I have to get off my ass and kind of get to work a little bit. So I'll come up with the dish. We'll we'll put the recipe online. All right, ptkradio.com, where you can download it and just print it out. You can go ahead and get your ingredients, and then we'll just cook together. I'll tell you exactly how we're gonna do it. I'll have, I'll tell you how I'm gonna prep for the dish. So when you guys tune in and we go live, you'll see that I have my onion cut, my garlic cut, or whatever we're making that night, and we can follow along. I can already tell you, I think next week we may do uh, chicken enchiladas. Yes. Because my friend Kelly, who is awesome, she taught me this little chicken enchilada dish that is really simple. We're not going to use one of the ingredients she uses. We're going to make it fresh, and I'll show you. But this is a dish that I would beg her to make um, because she does a really good job. It's exceptionally good. And, guys, it's another oven dish. Yeah. We'll make some black beans and rice to go with it, and maybe we'll make a little dessert that night because once you get it in the oven, there's really not a whole lot to do. So we'll probably get that in the oven. We'll make a little Mexican dessert, maybe some churros or something. Who knows? Churros. Know sure. Churros. Tell you what we have coming up as well. <laughs> We're going to make pasta. Like homemade? We're going to make homemade pasta. I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to make your own pasta. Even though I've only done it a couple of times, I actually got real close to damn good on my second try. And I know you guys are as good as I am. Trust me, it's not a big, it's egg and flour. But man, there's something very cool about making pasta. It's a real good drinking thing. Sit basin around, you get your working area, you get some wine going, and it cooks so fast. We'll do a dish with it, so we'll make our own pasta, and we'll do maybe um. Maybe I'll just do some chicken piccata real quick for you guys. A simple dish. It's a lot of, and one of my favorite. Uh, Getting a little crazy. Uh, no, but one of my favorite pasta dishes of all time <laughs> is piccata. Hell, we make it at the house all the time. Yeah. The kids love it. Capers, artichoke hearts, tomato, cream. God, how do you lose, man? Fan of the pasta. Fan oh, of the pasta. Every, every girl in the world. Let me tell you something, guys. If you're watching and you're a dude and you don't have a girl in your life. Learn you how to cook. Learn how to cook. Let me tell you something, man. It is magical what happens when you make a woman a good meal, specifically if it's pasta. Oh, my God. Girls love noodles, guys. Christopher loves you. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. <laughs> I truthfully do. I'm almost a beer tour. What am I going to drink next? Um, mm. get, the, get the one. I'm going to get that cucumber thing. Yeah. Sweet water. Sweet water. What is it? <laughs> hey, what's it called, babe? What beer are you drinking? It's a, so, this, <laughs> so again, for uh, for um, beer of the week last week, can I say that Angel Rivera is like one of my favorite people in the world? I hope he's listening. He's one of my favorite dudes in the world. And his and I, I'm so proud of him and happy for him uh, for the Monster Brew Bus that's starting up that he started. He thought of that idea by himself. He stuck with it and made it happen through the beer of the week segment we love the sweetwater brewing company their 420 is as legendary a beer as you can get they have a lot of other offerings as well this is one they brought in for, <laughs> for beer of the week and for the life of me i couldn't explain why i liked it this is a cucumber saison oh sounds a little it's called Cu cool breeze now that's funny i've got a buddy named joe who was at my house sunday one of my old schools and he has a relatively diverse palate, especially when it comes to alcohol. And I poured a fresh one of these, and I, was, <laughs> I told him, and I handed it to him, and I said, taste that. And he tasted it, and he just looked at me. And I didn't know if he wanted to punch me, but it seemed like he did. This is a beer lover's beer. There is no question this is a cucumber beer. So it's kind of light, crisp, and it finishes with a little bit of cucumber. Cool summer beer. It's seasonal. And that's from Sweetwater Brew Company. It's called Cool Breeze. And they were nice enough to give me a 12-pack of it, so I should give them a little love. It's a cool label. Mm -hmm. Go fishing. Tella Luna said, save him some churros. Oh, Tella! We're going to see you soon, dude. Uh, yeah, Tella, so we're going to do some uh, chicken enchiladas, and they are not going to be anything like what you make, but I hope you tune in and check them out. Let's we'll see what our meatloaf is doing here. Theta said that she uh, got her husband by cooking. Oh, really? Uh, Who? Thetis. There's a human being named Thetis? Thetis. Oh, Thetis. T-H. <laughs> you have to admit that'd be weird. What are you going to name him? I'll call him Thetis. 
Don't know what I'm going to call him when he grows up, but now let's call him Fetus. <laughs> it is a she. Oh, that's worse. We'll call her... Sheetus. No. Fetus with a T. I heard you. Okay. Um, they like the cutting board. What kind is it? I think this is a big green egg one. Yeah, it's from Big Green Egg. Yep. The Wassies were nice enough to give me that. Yep. Because they're straight up awesome people. Presenting sponsor of Primetime Kitchen. This meat is up to what, Tori? What are you laughing at like a little girl? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Mike is this said. Is happen all day? Is she just going to laugh like a kid? Mikey said. What is wrong? Feed us. Feed us. Feed us. Stop listening to those people. They're awful. Can you hear them? They're, they're terrible. Theta said she's a girl. Oh, sorry. Be nice. I love your name. It's Greek goddess of the sea. That's what she said. Oh, really? Is yeah. Is that what your mom told you? <laughs> when you guys were home on Friday nights by yourself? I'm joking. Relax. She said you got a man. Damn. I can't have no fun. I can't have fun. All right, so our meatloaf literally has five minutes. We're at 145 right now. We're going to cook it a little bit more. And you got to remember, guys, when you pull stuff out of the oven, it continues to cook, especially when it's surrounded by 150 or 300 degree glass. It's going to cook a little bit more. They want They said, what? You don't have an instant read thermometer. Oh, we're God. not bougie, Kathy. We're not bougie. Seven bucks, kid. <laughs> we'll keep buying them over and over and over. Seven dollars. <laughs> and before you ask, I'm drinking Cool Breeze from Sweetwater. Mm. How dare you, they said. We love you, sir. One fifty nine. One fifty nine for uh, touch, touch tips. Touch tips. Oh, not me. Here, touch. Mm. There we go. Chef fetus. That's what you should name. Um... Oh my god, these people are the worst ever. <laughs> Why do I ask? Why do I ask for it? Is it ready? Michael said, "Just cook and leave the jokes to me." You don't agree? No. I do not. Oh right. my god, you just smell that. You're making a mess. That's good, that's fine. All right. Now, so, that's out. Now we're good. So what we want to do is, so we have our sprouts. Yeah. All right. This deliciousness, you guys have to try it. Declan Law said it's cat meat. Cat meat? So tomatoes on. All right, very simple. Now, back in. Yep. Oven off, or excuse me, broil on, start high. So we wanna turn the high broiler, all right? So we're turning the high broiler. Okay. So the broiler's gonna come on. It gets really hot, 500 degrees or so. It's gonna just absolutely roast, cause they're done. Like the Brussels sprouts are cooked. Now we're looking for flavor. Once we have the inside cooked and we get them soft the way we want them, we want to char that outside. Here is the absolute must with your broiler. Do not walk away from it. Guys, this thing will go from zero to you ruin your dish in 30 seconds. I'm dead serious. You could walk outside to grab a smoke or something like that if you think you're going to be safe. You're not going to be safe. It's going to burn. Trust me when I tell you. Actually, most of the time when I cook with a broiler, once it gets to heat, I pull open the door and I watch it because you can literally watch it cook. I'm not kidding. Be very careful. Your broiler is an awesome tool, but it, but it can go sideways. Hey, we have Knoxville, Tennessee checking in. Hey, what's up, Knoxville? A couple of them. Krisha, awesome. Darla. What's up? Yeah. Knoxville. Krisha. That's a cool name. So when we cut this, we're not going to touch this glass because it's a thousand degrees and we're going to let it rest. Even though it's on a steak, our meat's going to pull aside. We could literally dump this right out on the table if we want because as it pulls away from the cooking dish and guys, there's so much fat and hamburger, you're not going to have a problem with this sticking. Literally, you could take it right out. The problem with that is, is you may have it fall apart. There is a, a, a trick if you want to do it. You ready? Yeah. So you can take this. A lot of guys will do a... Uh, ready to go. Yeah, whatever. So you go in with a fork, right? Yeah. Lift it up. Stick your knife all the way in and, uh -oh. use, and use that to lift it up. No, it would have lifted it right up. Oh, okay. So you stick your knife in sideways and lift it up, put it on your tray, carve like that. I carve mine right in the in the container, and then I use tongs to pick it out like that. 
just simply because I don't I don't want to get near that glass. It's like a true in degrees. Halifax, Nova Scotia, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That's awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate that so much. That's awesome. It is awesome. So look at that. Already, just in, from being in the broiler just a few minutes, look at the heat already. We're already seeing that. We're going to put it back in for a minute. We got Boston. We got some Castleberry in the house. Boston. Boston. Do it. Do a Boston accent. Uh, hold on. Park the car. <laughs> Close uh, the door. What is that? No, no, no. I'm, I'm oh. looking for a reason. Okay. Park the car by the dog or whatever the hell. What are you supposed to say with Boston people? Houston. Geneva. Geneva? Hey, Geneva. That's Tori's old stump. Yeah. See what I'm doing here? Yep. New York. Don't tear it apart. Take your time. Because if you go through it, believe it or not, you know that you hit a little piece of fat or something and you'll rip your meatloaf apart. You, you still have to look good, even though it's just basic old meatloaf. <laughs> but look how many servings you're going to have. And the cool thing about meatloaf is, if you have kids, or you have a big old fat dad in your family. The cool thing about leaving it in here is you can decide your portions. You go, okay, if the kids will eat that much, this will eat, mom will eat that much. And then you can make, oh my God, the best meat sandwiches, man. Sandwiches. Oh, now. You got oh. uh, Key Largo, Michigan, Houston, awesome. Deltona. Almost there. It's oh. Park the Car and Harvard Yard. Park the Car and Harvard Yard. <laughs> Park the Car and Harvard Yard. <laughs> Say what? I'm gonna get the bowls and stuff. All right, Port Orange. Hey man, thanks Port Orange. We appreciate that. All you guys, man, are you kidding? Kind of all these years, all this time, you guys watch and stuff. Tori and I can't begin to explain how much we appreciate you guys watching Pearson. the show and stuff. Pearson, dude, what's up? Growing some fern up in Pearson. Love it. Oh, Uranus. Come on, man. That's so hack. <clears throat> God, even the time I just walked over, you did something differently. Okay, these are the. Now, so I was going to tell you guys some secrets. Maryland, Nova Scotia. My God, guys. Use maple syrup instead of light brown sugar and barbecue sauce instead of, and it's super good. I disagree. Oh, sorry, Tony. I disagree. I don't, the maple syrup, I don't want maple flavor. And maple syrup is maple flavor. I don't think it adds. I don't, I don't. And another thing, you know what's weird? You get food memories, and when I taste maple, what do I think? Breakfast. Yep. I don't want to think about breakfast. I'm eating dinner, so I don't want maple. So I'm going to stick with that because I think those flavors blend together. Better. It's still warm. Let me double check. Because we're eating, guy. This is what we're having for dinner now. We are. Pop it in the microwave for a few minutes. One minute, we're going to get that heated back up. We're going to plate this meal. Winter Haven. Okay, now check this. Palm Bay. We're coming. We're coming. Tori. Hold on. Mmm. Can those, you hear that? Listen, listen. Get those crunchies. Listen. Get those crunchies. Listen to that. How awesome is that? That's so, flavor. So we have all this uh, rendered bacon, bacon fat with those roasted uh, onions. And notice how the belt, the brown, uh, the uh, the red onion doesn't get, it just cooks that water out. That's why I love it so much. The yellow onions sometimes don't do that. So we have a nice little bowl. That's a good serving. Yeah. Okay, it's perfect. so I'll show you how we're going to finish that. Yeah. This is good. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the secret? Okay, so this is the hackiest ingredient in all of cooking. Stop saying that. It's, it, if it's, it's true, good, it's it, not it hacky. It is, you're 100% true. But a lot of guys who are pros have already sworn this off. Don't listen to them. And the reason why is this. It gives tons of flavor, and it's a great way to start stretching out Sydney your Australia. cooking ability, right? So what we want to do is, this is all roasty. What's in here? Bacon, Brussels sprouts, onion, garlic, you know, tomato. Tomatoes. This there's not much sweet. So just look. That's all it takes. Yep. A little bit of balsamic vinegar reduction. Now this is the glaze. Don't put balsamic vinegar on that. It's going to change it. Get the glaze. The glaze is cooked down vinegar, so it's that nice sweet caramel type, like malty, beautiful sweet flavor. Now you can plate this however you want. Truthfully, you can. Uh, it's completely and utterly up to you. Here's how we're going to do it. So earlier I showed you how we're going to do the... Um, how much liquid smoke did you add? A couple drops. I mean, it doesn't take much. So we have our beautiful puree here. All right. How do I want to do this? Oh, I got it. So what we'll do is we'll put a little dollop here. 
Because as we cut through our meatloaf to eat, okay, as we cut through our meatloaf to eat, we want to make sure that we have the sizes all right. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's so perfect. We actually set that right on top. Mmm, my favorite. And actually, I. On top of that, I'm gonna put a couple sprouts like that on top. And, and believe it or not, we're gonna do a little bit of this as well. Over the whole dish? A little bit, just a little bit for sweet. And there you have it, guys. That is the Colbert family meatloaf with cauliflower puree and roasted Brussels sprouts with bacon and red onion. And that's what we eat. So that took about, what, 40 minutes to cook? Right? And that's 40 minutes kind of talking. And no, hanging out. it's oh. <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes. But look, we didn't, we didn't actually cook for a lot of that time. My arms are tired. <laughs> if we came in and made this dish like this, you can see there's a lot of downtime. What we filled by talking and stuff. And to be honest with you, I could have gotten this a little bit early. But look, this meal, if you plan it out right, should take you about the time it takes to roast the Brussels sprouts and yeah. cook the meatloaf. It should take about 40 minutes. Right. Even with prep time, it's fast. So this meal takes an easy time. It's a good, delicious meal. Look, this is a little fancy meatloaf, guys. A little bit of fancy meatloaf. So this has been episode four. You see what we have here. We're working on the recipe as soon as we get off the air. Tori and I are going to pile up. We're going to eat some dinner tonight. And then we'll let you guys know exactly what it takes to make this meal. Uh, if you don't mind and you enjoy this video, and you don't, we obviously would love you to share it and make sure that everybody gets a chance to check out the video. If you have friends and family and you think the show is fun, we'd certainly appreciate if you gave us a like and kind of spread the word a little bit, don't forget ptkradio.com is where you can get some of this merchandise you see tonight, like these glasses and the oven mitts and stuff. Uh, that supports, Not yet. That supports the show so that we can kind of keep going. Also, you can get us on Instagram at Primetime Kitchen, on Twitter at PTK Real Radio, and of course, where you're watching right now on Facebook at Primetime Kitchen, Primetime being one word. Don't forget, June 14th, it's the next PTK Live. Marlowe's out by the airport, Lee Vista, you can't miss it. We'll put a link up on, real, on ptkradio.com soon where you'll be able to click right through and buy your ticket. And you're gonna to wanna to do that. I think we've already sold half the tickets as it is. So get on board there. Um, and we have tons of other cool stuff coming your way, guys. This is our fourth show and we're moving forward. So thank you guys so much for the support. And we'll see you next Tuesday right here on Primetime Kitchen's How Tuesdays. See you later. See ya.